Uh, well, it absolutely does. And part of the reason I wanted to ask you that question, and I realize it's a loaded question, is I, I, I very much respected what you had to say on in the forum. And because what was said was a, what you were responding to was a fairly aggressive comment, but you really spoke about tolerance, about encouraging people to question what they believe in, but in this really just respectful, thoughtful, articulate way. And I was really glad to see it because in, in a, being a fan of your work, I was so disappointed in so many of the kind of automatic responses people had to the Golden Plates work. And so it was just, it, it was just, Honestly, for me, talking about it here was my way of saying I wanted to hear what you had to say and I want other people to hear what you have to say because I think it's profound, I think it's intelligent, and I think it's throughout all of your work and I, I just think it's important. I mean, it's, it's part of who you are. Well, I've found one consistency in that everyone at least wants to live by the golden rule, to simply treat people with the respect that you would hope to receive. And if we all did that, everything would be fine. And we wouldn't have to get into whose church is true or whose religion is true or, or is religion stupid in general. And um, it's, I, I can, it, you know, go with any argument, but um, I have to be true to what I've come to believe and what works for me. And so I simply try to do that. And when somebody reacts on, on a gut level to something without thinking it through, I'm not about to get angry and react the way they reacted towards me because that's when it gets ugly. That's when it, it, it becomes personal and you you know start throwing down. So if you can just you know let's just take a second <laughs> and you wouldn't want me to talk to you the way you just talked to me. So let's just respect one another and start from there. And if we can't, then we'll just go on with our lives separately. But I'm happy to talk with anybody about anything. I, I'm endlessly fascinated with everything on this planet. Um, I'm, I love that new, uh, it's not new, that, that old series uh, uh, Buddha um, that's in graphic novel form. Very interesting, very deep. And um, the Robert Crumb's Old, uh, old Testament, it's a masterpiece. You know, and you, some people might you think, oh, Robert Crumb drawing the Bible, they'll run screaming. <laughs> but it's right. beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. And um, so I, I, I find all of that exciting. And ultimately, we have one thing in common. We're all living and breathing on this planet at the same time. This is our turn to exist. Whether this is it or not, whether we just have these few decades, and that's it. That's all our existence means. Um, we don't know. None of us really, really, really know. The, the evidence might look strongly that that's it. We were born, we're biological accidents that progressed over, that the fact that anything exists, that time exists at all, is an amazing thing. So if this is all we have, let's make the best of it. If there's something else beyond this, if there's some deeper eternal meaning of, for our existence, shouldn't we hope for that and, and look that that might be a possibility and respect those that are trying to find some evidence of that? And for me, that's what the Book of Mormon is. If, if, if it's true that this is an ancient record of the American continent uh, when Christ was resurrected and came here, like in the New Testament, he tells his apostles that after he's resurrected, he tells them he's going to visit his other sheep. And here, supposedly, is a record of that. And then you have um, ancient cultures that have uh, the, the white god, or the, uh, you know, uh, like Captain Cook, the Hawaiian Islands, they thought he was the returning God, like did Christ visit the Hawaiian Islands? And then, you know, the Mayans, the Aztecs, there's parallels and all this, that's fascinating stuff. So if there's a possibility that that's true, then it's possible that we will live beyond this life. So it's, it, for me, I want to see the, the hope, the light in either of it. Either this is it, I'm only just going to have a few decades, well, then I'll make the best of it. Right. And at the same time, hopefully, there's a meaning 
there's something beyond this and that there is something that we can progress, pro progress to. So uh, I'm a half glass full guy. I guess I could have just stopped and my blowhardiness. <laughs> I could have stopped talking hours ago and just said I'm an optimist. That's, well, that's me. I'm an optimist. But I think that the, that's your edit. Yeah, that's the edit. <laughs> like all right, optimist. End of interview. Well, no, and I, and I appreciate your patience. It's it, again, like I said, this is this is part of who you are, and it's throughout your work, and I think it's really important. So I'm I absolutely appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you for being interested. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so uh, keep an eye out for iZombie coming out this summer. Uh, May, I think, yeah. May. May. So from Vertigo uh, and Madman winding down and, of course, will always exist in some form or another. Oh, yeah. And some people might wonder what... What is iZombie? Where is that in the progression of, of my work? And, and again, it's the same thing. It's it's questions of life and death, and and I mean, where do, it, it's a monster book. It's got our versions of every classic monster you can think of, and um, and I'm having a great time working with Chris Roberson on, on this. And it, it's again, it's fun to talk about this stuff. But where did monsters come from, and where did the monster legends, and what is that all about? You know, how was Mary Shelley inspired with Frankenstein and Bram Stoker with Dracula, and, and why are these so fascinating? But yet we joke about it and dress up on Halloween, and but yeah, it's, what is life? What is death? So yeah, it's a fun book. It's a monster book, but there's it, it's deep and rich as well. So and that's why I love comic books. That's why I love movies. That's why I love music because these are modes of expression, and that's the greatest thing about being a human being and sharing this planet is we all have the ability to express ourselves. And pop culture for me is the most exciting way of doing that. And so that's why I love all these things. Yeah. Well, and it's wonderful. And you know, at, again, all of your work has those layers. I mean, it's fun, it's playful, but it's thoughtful, it's provoking, it's challenging, and and it just makes you think. Good. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking time. We won't we won't take up any more of your time today. I really thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, thanks for watching Backroom Podcast.